Yo, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Sonny here coming at you guys with another Neverwinter video by the title and thumbnail. You know why you clicked on guys. We have some big changes to Neverwinter coming. Mount specifically and upgrade changes. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into this video. Now right off the rip, a lot of players have been commenting that they want the legendary mount because they want faster movement speed when mounted. We thought it would be nice to simplify mount speeds altogether. All players will now have two mount speeds. The first one is as fast as the existing legendary mount speed, and the second speed is the same speed for uncommon quality mounts for your role playing and protectors on clay parade needs. So pretty much we have two standard mount speeds, right guys? Anymore, it doesn't matter what quality you get, common, uncommon, epic, rare, legendary, it's gonna be 140. And if you're looking to just have a little bit of fun, you can go around and rock that 50 speed mount. Now, I'm not sure if it automatically switches as soon as you hit the Enclave to 50 or if you could just keep rocking the 140 all the time. But now it's no matter, you know, as soon as you go into any other zone, which is big, guys, because a lot of the problems with Neverwinters is traversing the maps. And if you have a slow mount, it just puts a detriment on time and the experience of Neverwinter as a whole, in my opinion, because if you keep getting constantly knocked off your horse because you can't afford a faster mount, it's discouraging as a player, you know? So a lot of those players will just sometimes just walk away because they're like, man, why do I got to spend millions of dollars on a quicker mount when I need that mount now and I'm not even making money? So here we go. Another big change. Mounts are upgraded through mount upgrade tokens which will initially be available from the zen market the trade bar store and certain events such as the help it okay a few changes were made to mounts to support upgrading all three all mounts have three insignia slots regardless of quality insignia slots do not change during upgrade all mounts now have a passive and combat power those powers scale up as the mount is increased in quality. Any power shared by multiple mounts will scale to the highest quality mount that you own, which grants that power. Mounts which previously didn't have a combat power will now have one of three generic new combat powers that either do a single target damage, an AoE damage, and a self-heal over time. So let's just run that back real quick just to break it down. So right off the rip, another big change other than just having a base speed of 140, no matter the quality of the mount, is now, regardless of the quality of the mount, it, you'll have three insignia bonus slots. And that was actually a pretty big thing as well, because if you used an uncommon or a common mount, you only had two insignia slots. Now, right off the rip, they completely removed the two bonus insignia slots, which they probably realized that at the end of the day, nobody was using, and they just made it universal three, which... Was it which should have been the idea from the beginning, but as I always say, my slogan is better late than never. And now each mount, regardless of its quality, so pretty much the only mounts in the game currently that had the combat power was the legendary mounts. But now, regardless of the quality, it's gonna either have a single target attack, an AoE damage, and a self-heal over time. So now you are going to be having 140 speed mount three insignia slots regardless of the quality and a combat power regardless of the quality so right there are three big changes of life to mounts in general that should have been implemented in my opinion a long time ago but at least we're seeing it now your 10 highest quality mounts added to your mount bolster which in turn increases your mount passive and combat powers up to double their base effectiveness so pretty much the mounts is actually a way of you know another source of damage you know you could effectively double your mounts passive combat and up so it's almost like now you upgrade your companions but you also upgrade your mounts which in hand you kind of did in regards to the insignias but now it's more individually baseline to where you're upgrading the individual mounts themselves rather than just the insignia slot. So it's actually more content, you know, in a sense, added to the game just by this new system implemented. 
As mentioned above, insignia slots do not change as your mount is upgraded. Along with that, you do not unlock additional costumes or powers as your mounts rank up. This means the rare mounts will still retain a good amount of their uniqueness, including their multiple universal insignia slots and their unique combat powers. So at the end of the day, yes, legendary mounts will be less valuable in my opinion, but the ones that do require just for skin cosmetics and you know the combat power itself like the tenders disc um if you're still looking for 10k power you're still gonna have to buy the legendary mounts in order to get those but mount passive powers were reworked to be a higher item level and grant more stats too along with that this they also grant a large part of their stats to combined ratings to better help players gear up overall and make it less likely they slotting a given passive power will shoot one stat far over cap while leaving the others under cap so right now neverwinter is on this whole balance train and i'm i appreciate it you know it's nice to see that they're implementing things for not just the end game players because at the end of the day we know all the players are going to be like oh well i'm end game i'm done ah woo, woo, woo. but to your point there are players just like your boy sunny at the moment who are way under level who are way underpowered who need these little boosts and upgrades and who are going to appreciate and see the differences more you know maybe for those players who are already maxed out you might not see the differences and you know notice just how much stronger you are but for the average player i'm telling you these are going to be nice implements to a change of life within the game of neverwinter keep it going as we can see right here on the screen real quick is the way the new and you know the mount system will be set up we can have the appearance the combat power the stat power and gallops 140 speed with the mount bolster total at the bottom of 50 percent we could see the insignia slots are still the same to universal on this specific mount with the illuminated moving on down we could see guys you can upgrade your mount to mythic as well quality with 200 mount upgrade tokens so obviously that's going to be a big thing as well is you could take an a, an a common mount purposely you know if you really wanted to and take that thing all the way up to mythic if it was so much your desire now is that going to be the most beneficial thing to do probably not but at the same time the option is there that it's no longer a need to buy a legendary mount if you're not looking for that combat or mount power specifically yet you just want that bonus that it's going to give you from just like on the companion front you get bonuses for all those companions you have legendary well you're going to do your best to have as many legendary mounts as you can in your stable to maximize your bolster but wait there's more we also wanted to add some options and values to mounts. Your stables now have a new slot, which is for mount collars. Mount collars are new items that will grant benefits to your utility stats that come in qualities from common to mythic, and mounts can only wear an equal or lower quality collar. Now, we're going to get to the collars here in one minute. They're just discussing them now. Base mount collars will drop in dungeons, as will some new upgrade materials, stones of empowerment from critter drops, and greater stones of empowerment from epic dungeons and trials and chests to rank up those collars. One extra unique aspect of these collars is that they come in specific types. A character can only benefit from one of a given collar type at the time, so make sure to get all five all five types to maximize your benefits. So right off the rip, they're telling you you can only have one of each. It's your best bet to get them all mythic. Of course, that's going to be a grind, and to have each one individually you know of all five aptitudes now it doesn't say specifically what each one gives you but it also doesn't even say the rate at which these drops you know i'm assuming if you're looking for the legendary mythic ones you're at a pretty low rate there now i'm not sure neither if these are sellable because it doesn't say exactly as well i'm assuming if you can get them from chess they might be just as well sellable just like some of the rings as we can see right here we have another image um, of the collars here on the left hand side and you could still you have your stable your mounts now remember guys they have legendary pictures here but don't be discouraged because up at the top just to reiterate you don't need to have legendaries or even you know a rare mount quality to have all three slots unlocked along with the collar you can have whatever quality you want here all the way down from common to mythic moving on we have the zen store adjustments um, especially made to the epic mounts will be 
1500 Zen down from 3500 while making the change that we also forward with another plan we have been talking about for a while. We lowered the cost of Epic Companions down from 1500 Zen and we made Companion Zen Market purchases account wide unlocks in the same way that Zen Market mounts already were. So, this is actually pretty big to Neverwinter, guys. Not only are the you know the Epic mounts have been account bound for I think the whole game, to my knowledge, you know, as far as long as I've been playing, um, they have always been account bound. But the companions, to say that, and I'm not sure the companion front of Neverwinter now. I don't really buy companions of the Zen market, but if they might have a couple in there that could be beneficial for those multi tune players out there, instead of buying individual companions all the time, just buying one from the Zen market now and having it account wide could be a game changer. In many cases, the account-wide reclaims for companions will be retroactive and players will see their reclaims for past purchases show up for their alts to claim as the change goes live. So, I'm going to assume that Neverwinter knows that you, well, yeah, they have to know that you, now, this is a little tricky. It's a little tricky because neverwinter has to know that you bought one of those companions in the past previously and then i'm assuming when this goes live you will be able to reclaim those companions that you have previously purchased on all your alts which is kind of crazy to think um for those players who have been playing a long time if you have bought companions off the zen market you're gonna have to let me know exactly when these changes go live if that's the case or does this only affect because i mean it does say purchases show up for their alts as soon as the chains goes live but you know never winter it could be a little a little bit wishy-washy um i mean i'm hoping it runs perfectly smooth but you know there's always a little bit of doubt in my head i can't lie this does not apply to all companions and does not apply to previously limited time companions such as the alpha company or companions that are currently not no that are currently not wait or companions that are not currently for sale okay that was a little bit of a tongue twister for your boy Sonny. Because they are now reclaims, companions no longer come with the bonding runestone. I mean, that's a fair assumption. Um, the bonding isn't even really that big of a deal. Locks box adjustments. Whoa, what the heck is going on here? There is one last change that goes along with all the others. The top three chase items and lock boxes have their odds improved. The top chase price is now over three times as likely to drop. I'm still in my mindset with lock boxes. They are what they are. They're RNG. Um, will this make it so more people will be pulling uh, top tier rewards? I mean, that's what it said. Three times more likely. Um, the top three chase items, as far as I know, is the legendary mount packs, the epics, and usually if there's like an artifact pack in there. So I'm going to have to test this when this goes live. And maybe your boy Sonny can finally pull a legendary mount. It only took them to increase the reward drops. But... I'm not going to complain. And then right off the last but not least, the free pack, guys. So as soon as all these changes go live, head over to Rewards Agent because we're going to get 75 upgrade tokens, a free epic mount collar choice pack, which could be pretty big. I'm not sure, like I said, of the statistics for each of those um, collars. but So just pick one that you feel. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to do more research on these. I just I'm I'm pretty excited. I really am excited about these changes. 150 stones of empowerment, 50 stones of greater empowerment, and 100 percent off a coupon code. So they're actually giving us a free companion that's going to be account bound. That's crazy, man. They, these guys are being real generous right now. I'm not sure what what they've been drinking in their coffee lately, but I'm not complaining, guys. I honestly want to know your genuine thoughts and opinions and for those players I want to hear veteran players I want to hear new players perspectives guys what do you think about the mount changes are you excited do you really care I mean maybe there's those players who already have five legendary mounts and you know you already got everything you need but those new players out there I think will appreciate this more but as always guys you know this is going to be the end of the video um, so if you're, you know, you're just here for the news aspect, you can click off now. Um, but for those of you who, you know, really mess with me, I wanted to introduce this at the end of the video, guys, because I do have some pretty uh, bad news. I can't lie. Um, shit. This is pretty rough. Uh, on over the weekend, you know, 
you know as you guys know everything going on with my aunt and it's not looking good unfortunately last week we got the confirmation you know 100 percent that she was diagnosed you know i was hoping that it wasn't but you know uh, i was als now and on saturday you know we had a good time sunday is when uh things took a turn for the worst and she was rushed to the hospital and monday which is today obviously is her birthday and um yeah it's it's not it's not a good feeling at all um i really had a lot of stuff planned i had some videos i mean sunday was my three year anniversary for neverwinter on youtube my first video and i really had something big planned and it sucks because you never know when shit like this is gonna happen but um for all those out there who believe and you know don't mind sending a couple words of prayer i would really appreciate it man if you guys would just keep my family um you know especially my aunt and your thoughts bro i'm not gonna lie your boy sonny ain't ready to lose another family member not yet uh maybe that's being a little selfish but uh, um yeah i'm not sure i'm gonna try to do my best to make as many videos this week as i can because i can't lie these videos help me um, clear my mind and get me off of it and not have me worried all the time always looking at my damn phone and with this coronavirus it sucks they don't even allow visitors or anything like that so it's just a waiting game guys but uh yeah it, it has been your boy sunny and i love you guys all and i appreciate the support and i hope you continue to support me until whenever until next time peace out